Hello, listeners. It's CJ. This retro review was actually originally released on our Patreon feed back in February of 2020, but we are ripping open the vaults and releasing these episodes to you at no charge. Currently, we're taking a break from our Patreon, so if you want to, you go to thatkindofnerd.com where you can actually support us directly, and we will be releasing our Patreon episodes during our off weeks. We know that superhero movies are all over the place right now. But back in 1996, The Phantom with Billy Zane was one of the early entries into the comic book world that even tried to set up direct sequels. This movie was a blast to watch and had a bit of a harsh opinion amongst the other nerds. So without further ado, I give to you our retro review of The Phantom. Welcome to the club, cause you're that kind of nerd. Welcome, listeners, to your exclusive retro review of 1996's The Phantom, starring Billy Zane. I'm Josh Burns, joined by Brian Thornton and CJ Mellon. And unlike last week, we're not sick. We sound normal. Welcome to Dino Waitresses Watch Movies. <laughs> 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 my name's Gladys <coughs> I gotta tell you nothing was better nothing was better than Brian's waitress uh, voice that happened in the middle of Lost in Space <coughs> it was pretty nice if you haven't listened to it yet eh, do yourself a treat get yourself on that one do yourself a treat you know what I would just you could just let it happen no no not when you say stuff like do yourself a treat that sounds dirty no. yeah it does sound dirty I'm all right in. I will say that for this movie, I, I did, I, you know, I watched it in its entirety. It wasn't the first time I've seen this. Right. Um, but I did, uh, I did uh, record my musings as, as the movie went. That's Before- exciting. I have some thoughts written down as well. More importantly, I have some facts written down. So- oh, good. That's nice. Real quick, the, real quick, the fact though of, 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 of about this movie. Why did we do this movie? What, what what prompted the Phantom? You are the one who really wanted to do the Phantom. So you, you are the ones who are but the ball lickers because <laughs> you brought up you brought up the Phantom and you brought up the Alec Bald Shadow that one too. Oh. Yes, uh, and then so. I said Affleck was the bomb in Phantoms. Right. So right. speaking of which, Thank you. so this movie came out in 1996, as you said uh, previously. This was a part of a huge wave in the 90s of uh, old comic book strips becoming uh, movies. So The Phantom was a comic strip that started in 1936. um, And really, when we're talking about this kind of wave of pulp action movies, it all started with Dick Tracy. So Dick Tracy came out in 1990. It was huge business. So movie studios were like, well, we got to do more of this stuff. So you had Dick Tracy in 90. Which uh, budget uh, was forty seven million made one hundred sixty two million. Oh, nice. So this one did not huge fare business. As well. What's that? This one did not fare as well. Well, we're gonna get there. Uh, the year following in ninety one, the Rocketeer came out, Love which that movie. did did pretty darn well as well. After on a budget of thirty five million, it grossed forty six million. So enough to say we should keep this ball mm, rolling. They right. should have quit while they were ahead. <laughs> two out of three would have been the, the someone worked some odds. The Shadow came out in 1994. Oh, uh, wow, really? That was before this? Yeah. this the, All oh. leading up to this. The Shadow came out in 1994. That was on a budget of $25 million. It grossed $48 million. Okay. So this is this is like hey, we're all the stars optimistic. are aligning. It makes sense to do a Phantom movie. People are into the pulp movies. People are into these comic strip adaptations. Right. We should like this, right? Yeah. And then this movie came out. Do you want me to save the budget and the gross till the end? No, let's no, let's no. Let's ahead. hear it. Let's let's hear it now. This budget um, uh, was an estimated forty five million. To yeah, pay. I'm not sure how, but okay. Gross <laughs> worldwide, seventeen million three hundred twenty three thousand. Oh, oh yeah, they took a bath. Real bad. They lost everything the box, they made on the office. previous two movies. Uh, <laughs> real, real bad beating. Wow. Um, as mentioned previously, this stars Billy Zane as the Phantom. Which, uh, if you don't know Billy Zane, you'll know him as the douchebag in Titanic. Right. And um, that's uh, who probably know about Billy it. Zane? Dead Calm. Come on. No one's seen Dead Calm but you I've and seen me. Dead Calm. I've, I've never even heard of this. Yeah. Again, no it's one's Titanic. seen Dead Calm but me and Josh. 
Um, it also stars Christy Swanson, who you probably don't know because well, um, you've never seen Buffy. She was the original Buffy before Sarah Michelle Gellar. Yes. The whole time I'm watching her, I'm going, you look really familiar. Shut up. Now, Billy Zane play, plays the Phantom, who is actually a descendant of a long line of Phantoms. Essentially, he is uh, Batman in the jungle. Has no superpowers, just has a sweet hideout, a long lineage. People think he is immortal because uh, the mantle is passed down from father to son. So there's always somebody to take the Phantom's place. So It's kind of like if Indiana Jones tried to be Batman. <laughs> right, exactly. Sure, absolutely. That's yes. what um, They are uh, running afoul of some people who are looking to uh, collect these uh, three skulls, one made of silver, one made of jade, and one made of gold, uh, to put them together to do whatever nefarious plot they want to do. Uh, that uh, is led by Treat Williams, who is... You may not know the name, but he's one of those. Hey, I know that guy. He's was he a substitute. He was, was he a substitute everyone. at one point. And he wasn't. He, he was. was a he is everywhere, but he's never like the main draw. He was on Everwood. He's Williams. the dad on Everwood, which I'm pr- probably I, think is the most. I gotta. Best. I gotta tell you, the third musing in my list of musings is how often do you get to say Treat Williams is a breath of fresh air? <laughs> <laughs> he was so good. We're, this we're movie gonna... was one of those occasions. Yes. Um. Also in his toe is Catherine Zeta-Jones in one of her early American roles, way even before Mask of Zorro. Right. Um, and James Remar, which if you don't know who James Remar is, you should. He is everywhere, and he's always yes. great. He's, he's always the dad oh, of Dexter. Dude. Yes. But he is also raided in Mortal Kombat Annihilation. So there is uh, your main cast. Uh, speaking of Mortal Kombat, this movie ends in a climax with Shang Tsung. Yes, also... So, there you go. Uh, uh, let me let me get to that comment, which was super <laughs> late in my notes. It said, <laughs> "Oh, same evil Asian guy always." <laughs> it was the nineties. We're like, "Hey, we're making a thing that's based off another thing. We need a we need an evil Chinese. Who we got?" All right. So all in all, this movie is very straightforward, very MacGuffin. We have to we want to get the skulls, but we have to stop the bad guys from getting the skulls. Right kind of story so it's very straightforward very me you know just we've seen this story a million times so why is this movie so bad but this movie is not so bad it's so bad here's the thing cj bad cj it is and here's why because on paper there is nothing wrong with this movie right the, the, the writing is completely serviceable. It mm-hmm. is a, a straightforward story. The production design is is well done. You actually, you the writing gets a pass because it was set in 1936. So, like, Correct. you're right. automatically like, I understand why they're being sort of corny and proper and whatever. Yes. Right. It, it's a little over the top, but we get it, right? 1930s writing style. And, and like, sometimes these pulp movies, like, they go that way, right? <coughs> but, like... So everything is aligned to make it good, but it's not good. And that's why it's even extra bad. See, I I love The Rocketeer. I love The Rocketeer. I love The Rocketeer, but too. But The Rocketeer did not age well at all. It's a I lot dis- of green I screen. I disagree with you. It's a lot of green screen in there. It's a lot of like, ooh. Like it just, I've it never just, seen it. It doesn't do well. This movie is very practical most of the time, and the time where it's not practical, they they try their real hard best to make it look like we're not in front of a green screen. We're totally on this plane right now. I you know don't get points for trying, sense. CJ. But you do because but it the was problem actually is enjoyable. This. My complaint is, I just said, complaints are not with the production design. The complaints are not with the special effects. It's 1996 special effects. Yeah. We're fine. They did better than Lost in Space special the effects. The complaint that those so are not the, the complaints. Wh- why does why do suck? you get done with this film and feel unfulfilled? Why? I I didn't. I'm leave. asking you guys. I know. I why. didn't leave the movie feeling unfulfilled, so I I can't I can't answer your question, <laughs> Josh. It's a it's a little anticlimactic with Treat Williams blowing up in the middle with the uh, three skulls. It, it a little anticlimactic doesn't quite. Like that—that that was all a little right. Listen, the the final two things, uh, the final two lines, Treat Williams says are uh, in order. What a cheap jungle trick! 
followed by unbelievable and then he explodes <laughs> I now just, i loved his character so much um i honestly like it was it was really really bad and then treat william shows up and you're like what a breath of fresh air uh but i mean just chewing the scenery the whole a great here's time. the reason you feel unfulfilled brian is because they, like they wrote the story in parts, but none of those parts ever linked together. Really, you just kind of jumped from from set to set. <laughs> um, it was very, very, very like I for a forty five million dollar budget, <laughs> it was very cheaply made. I think I had, they linked I, together just fine. I had a problem of, of jumping to from the jungle to the city, the jungle to the city. Right, right. I'm like, whoa, whoa, geography, whoa, whoa. Hey, this this should be this should be a bigger deal, guys. But here's. But I don't I don't feel unfulfilled about this movie. So Here's I my thing. I'm on board for this. Here's my thing. Treat Williams, Catherine Zeta Jones, James Remar, they all know what kind of movie they're in. And they're all yeah. really enjoying themselves. And they're all over the top and they're all playing it up. And, and that's enjoyable. Billy Zane, Billy Zane and his Christy head Swanson are movie. awful. You know, I always confuse Forget James. about the fact that he should have shaved his head. I always confuse James Remar and, and <clears throat> Ted Levine. I don't know why. Okay, so James Remar is obviously in this movie was also like Too Fast, Too Furious, and he was uh, Dexter's father and a bunch of other stuff. Ted Levine was uh, like the, the agent, the cop guy in the first Fast and Furious. I thought it was the same guy. He was the Buffalo Bill in Science of the Lambs. I don't oh. know why I confuse the oh. two of them, but I always confuse the two of them. They are very different. They are very different. Uh, they yeah. kind of they kind of look a little similar, and they're both like gruff. Um, so, but they I I confuse the two of them all the time. I just had to come out and say that just for full disclosure. I mean, okay, I, I don't I don't see that any look similarity, but I think the problem comes back to this: Billy Zane and. and, and Christy Swanson are not not good. Oh, they're terrible. And and they and they are your main draw, and they are your main character, and that's why this movie is <laughs> so subpar. Billy <laughs> Zane was very flat and just basically <laughs> a Boy Scout and felt uh-huh. a little undefined. He or was not, not even not a, a Boy a Scout. Undefined. He, he wasn't was charming. He wasn't he wasn't likable. I should like this guy, but I don't. I'm just like okay. Let's be real. The freaking purple spandex leotard thing is ridiculous. Okay, so I see this is clearly turning into I'm defending this movie, and I have to be yeah, no, a, a it phantom absolutely should be that, which is so messed up. The, yes, the costume is weird, but it's uh, again, it's 1996, and for 1996, it's it's fine. It's purple. It's very purple, but that's what the character was. It was, I, it was I I cite the the guns uh, don't actually shoot people. The phantom doesn't shoot people. He shoots the 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 guns out of their hands, but he doesn't shoot people. Okay, fine. Uh, but like we're gonna we're gonna write we're gonna write a character called the Phantom, and yes. I, you know I'm I'm we're sitting around the table and we're we're drawing up you know picture boards Phantom. What does the Phantom look like? Right. Well, he should wear purple. Oh, purple. Why? Why wouldn't he wear like black or gray? Well, his mask will be black. Oh, and he'll wear a steel skull ring. What? Okay. A skull, but that's not that's not something that's, that you can that's fault not the this movie's movie fault. For. That that this is, is yes, that because is. of his jungle friends. Oh, because of his jungle, he has a phantom in the jungle. Yes, this, he is. He's the ghost who walks. But, oh, the hold on, but but you. This then is that's all the problem with the source material. This is all from from the comic strip. So like, I, underst- I understand. And none of that is. But is was he purple bad. in the comic strip? Yes. yes. They should have updated that. It's 1996 for Christ's sake. I think. I mean, I don't even. I don't Can care you wear purple to blend in in the jungle. I don't think the purple is the is the problem. It's just the fact that it's spandex. It's the fact Purple's that it's a problem. It Purple's looks a problem. odd on Billy Zane. Like, yo, he got jacked for this movie. I'm well aware he got it, jacked I mean, for this it movie. It fit him just fine. It looked fine in it. It wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't like Shazam, right? Shazam with Zachary Levi has the fake muscles built into it. Things just don't look real. Can like we it, go it looks back comic booky. To before we even saw Billy Jane, uh, Billy Zane, and talk about the fucking truck on the janky ass. <laughs> what would you like, like to talk about there, please? Oh no, he was. He was in the back of the truck at that point. Um, but are we talking but, about like when the, the truck is about to like flip over? Yeah, on yeah, the yeah. janky. Now, now, okay. see him and the kid that were tied up in the back. They're doing a full a full on flip. This truck hasn't hasn't tumbled yet, but Correct. they they are tumbling around the back of this truck somehow. Correct. Yep. And, and then the truck, 
the bridge is at a 45 degree angle and yet all four of the truck's tires are still on there. <laughs> and then they're like, oh, well, they're on there because the, it's a rope bridge and the ropes are holding the truck. Then how right. is the truck driving on there if the. Now, the, the bridge co- flips completely up and the truck's still there. It's the wheels are still on the, the fr- planks yes. of this janky ass bridge. Like they're super glued to the, the Somebody bridge Somebody help me. They, like I saw it. I'm like, oh, this is going to be good. This movie is going to be good. <laughs> I cannot just- explain uh, phantom physics to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Josh. Phantom there physics. There are more inconsistencies. <clears throat> and, and, and the second one that I, I really, shortly after that, he goes to his uh, cave of solitude there. And he's talking to, you would imagine, uh, his mentor, father, you don't know. Oh, yeah. Let's like, talk about that for a second. And he's too. like, I, 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 I lost I lost the skull. And the guy's like, it's okay. We make mistakes. And he's like, well, no, I, I lost it to the Sang brother. And he's, Fire, brimstone. And I'm over here going, calm down, Edward the Longshanks, hammer of the Scots. It's my, not that big a deal. My thing about that scene is we never his, explained his... W- his father makes a point of saying that they've been trying to track down those skulls for 400 years. Right. As He said I lost it, and he was like, it's okay. Yeah. As the Phantom, wouldn't I want to know the location of something that an evil brotherhood has been looking yeah. for for 400 years? Yes. That's my big question about that scene. What are you doing for the last 400 Why years? Why don't you know what these skulls are? Or where they are. Well, he knows what they are. No, he, he doesn't because that's, he, he had to look it up in a book. But he had the book. You would think. Well, hey, that doesn't. CJ. No, no, no. Having the <clears throat> book Having the, the, is not the same as possessing the knowledge right. of said, said item. CJ, you would think right? if you were going to take over something for me, I would give you whatever pertinent information you have sure. that you need, right? Here's some th- important shit. There's other stuff you can learn in the books. But but here here just so you know yes there's there's this this evil order searching for these skulls here's everything you need to know about them bye not like I bought you these thirty volumes of the Encyclopedia Britannica so he he all knows about the evil order right he spends most of his life in New York not on the island while his dad is going around being the Phantom and only comes back to the island to become the Phantom once his dad is dead the bigger question is we don't address. Or explain the fact that he can talk to his dad. Is he is a ghost of his dad? Is that his imagination? Does the Phantom have the powers to talk to the other Phantoms? Well, we it's, never address that ever, and that's the part that bothers me more than how come he didn't know. No, about the it's skulls. like the Black Panther. He can he can commune. He with can the commune Panther. with his that's ancestors. That's only when he eats the fruit in Black Panther, right, and gets buried underground <laughs> that he can talk to his dad to the ancestral plane. But right. he's already in. So the Phantom. Hold on. Is what is what his little friend called the Skull Cave? He's already in the skull he's, cave. He's but he's in the he's in a taxi talking yeah, to his he's dad. Yeah, he's in a taxi New talking York. to his dad. It's not like they're in a special spot. He is wearing a skull <laughs> ring. <laughs> okay, the skull ring is what because it's the fifth skull or the fourth skull. The fourth his skull. father taught him how to communicate, <laughs> but not dead. what to be looking out for. His father <laughs> right. is a Jedi, <laughs> and okay. then and then also in the four Here's how years we communicate that with he's the dead. been the Phantom, he right. didn't even bother. <laughs> To like bone up on what the fuck's been going on with his dad for <laughs> the last hundred years, right? I, 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 I he should have known this that. information. He should have known where but, these skulls were so that he could protect them. But that's not necessarily Kit's fault. That's it's his a, dad's fault for not giving him the knowledge. It's a, He's only been doing it for six years. That's not Kit's fault. CJ, if you've been doing something for six years, John, I certainly hope you know what six, the hell you're I doing. I mean, his father died in thirty-two, right? Oh, I, I'm not cracking out an abacus to do that math. I don't know. I think it was four years, but okay. Whatever. But but that's not his. It, Brian, if I'm taking over your job, right? I walk into your, your job tomorrow and I'm taking over, okay? Four years later, it's, you should know what the hell is going well, on. I, but I, I wasn't well, with you CJ for the four years. CJ's is at best, he's a fantalito. He's <laughs> right. not quite a phantom. He's not there yet. He's only been doing it for a few years. And the only reason he took over is because he died unexpectedly. It's not like they had the power. He was stabbed CJ. to the hilt. He CJ. was back. Right. He was this in is, New York. This is not you coming in and taking over my job. This is something, a mantle. No. This is a mantle. Right. But shut it, shut up. Let me speak. This is a mantle. Mantle. That is passed down from father to son yeah, hold on. for 
20 generations. Mantles are in the wall. They're very heavy. You for just, tw- no, your joke is stupid, and my argument is valid. No, l- 20 I under- generations. You sure. don't think. Do you, you don't think, think Edward the Longshanks like- wore that purple thing with the deep, with the oh, deep yes. widow's peak? Here? Yes, he did. I don't think his forehead could could take that <laughs> widow's peak. <laughs> the widow's peak is customized based on generation. I'm saying, what did somebody customize? I mean, because and also Billy Zane clearly taller than than the Hammer of the Scots. Yeah, I guess the 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 boy servant whose name I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure he made the suit. He made this suit. That's fine. He's doing a lot of things. My point the one is... That, the one that walks around going, old yes, jungle on. saint. So hold on. I'll you're, take your you're point. Not, you're wait, not, wait, wait, you're let me, not let me putting together the, the most important let knowledge. We're like, let's... hey, hey, boy in cave who's going yes. to make my son's suit. Give do, my son on. this wait. in the event of my he, demise. Yes. Okay. I agree. Problem with that. But again, not kid's fault. That's his dad's fault. So yell at his dad. Second part. I'm said, not hey, Wait, shut up. Now you shut up. No, now you shut up. Not blaming the Now you shut up. If the second part is, okay, shouldn't there be the knowledge of the skull somewhere? Yes, it's in the book. It is his dad's fault for not giving him no, the knowledge. No, no, see, now, now we have, here's, now what we have here is, is, is a, no, it's a, this is a generational argument. Instead of waiting to be handed the knowledge, CJ, Brian is saying, if he were a responsible phantom, he would have said, what have my ancestors been doing the last 400 does years? that impact Probably. the movie? We have gotten it, way into the weeds of something that doesn't matter it is, at all. It, 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 it does impact the movie because there's a question I had. I blame and foremost. you, Secondly, no, no, you don't secondly, blame for this. This is Brian's rabbit hole. Secondly, I'm in. not blaming the characters. I'm blaming the writing. It doesn't take much for you to be like, oh, yeah, I know about these skulls. I better go to New York because I know that's where the other but school is. But they want to show him to be smart oh. and read a big book. Now we're 15 minutes into the movie. He goes to New York. Uh, there's Christy Swanson. Everything's wonderful. Treat Williams shows up. <laughs> I'll just buy your silly paper. I fucking love that. How much uh, does a paper cost? Well, it's about uh, 50 cents in the uh, Wednesday. And then, and then uh, you've got the meeting with the gangsters, which was hilarious. Uh, uh, like, uh, instead of just shooting you. I'm going to throw a oh, heavy spear <laughs> and then complain about my rotator cuff. Because it makes a God. statement, Josh. <laughs> oh, I love it. Makes sure, 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 sure. A bullet wouldn't have made the same statement. <laughs> uh, no, no, not in the 30s. Only uh, spears. Only, <laughs> only spears. spears. Only spears. Or impaling somebody on the stuffed bear you have in your study. It, 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 no, that was on a microscope. That was a microscope. Oh yeah, yeah, I know that. I was just saying he probably had a stuff. You're not going to need these glasses anymore. That was making fun. a statement. See, I didn't that kill guy you. Alive. Did just you gonna... see how they barely came up out of it? Right, he just like... kill you. He would just be blind. I just, I just, no, but not even enough for you to like have have to like have your you have you to wear pull your eyes forever. out. Yes, yeah, yes. It didn't my, pull his eyes out. They my, just scratched his corneas. My favorite thing about Treat Williams' performance is just how he's at that. Hi, how are you? Hey thing the whole time but then does extremely sinister things but then just like you said uh josh they're completely undercut or just smacked on the back end with just and now we're back to ridiculousness oh. and i loved it oh it was so fun that was so, so funny. That's, but that's the problem he's fun the yeah. rest of the cast should have been fun was right. billy zane well, was not thought, fun I'll, billy I'll, zane I'll lands me. in the ship right and he's gonna go rescue uh diana and he, he goes on the laundry chute after being in the the bathroom with the women he goes how many women? Is this a boat full of women? I'm like, that's yeah, funny. Yeah. Yeah. That's a funny so, bit. It's, uh, yo, excuse me, sir. I mean, pardon me, ladies. And then like <laughs> yeah. down the chute. Down the chute. Uh, is this a ship full, full of, of women? women? Uh, it's funny. And then Catherine Zeta-Jones, who's got like an evil uh, boyfriend, whatever, is like she's super jealous all of a sudden. Yeah, that's weird. Uh, it was, that was very, very strange. And, and the same thing to her with when, they, when they're when they in the, the pirate ship, they're like, us girls got to sit together. I'm like, are you yeah, a nice she, no, Are you a good reason. person now? She, for what? no reason, becomes their friend. No you are, reason. You just, are bipolar. Yeah, like, oh, and we're cool with it. Everyone's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know she just flew all those planes and tried we, to kill we, everybody. We can't, cool we can't skip ahead. I have many musings in between. Uh, so after the ship thing, and they go back to the island, my first thought was there must be an awful lot of exploded wreckage around. Yes. Because it's just, it just, that okay, my favorite line of the whole movie uh, is in the jungle there. And Billy Zane goes, my friends. The rope people. <laughs> <laughs> well, he told the little boy. Don't, I went. Go ho! Don't go hang. Go hang with the rope people. I went. Wait. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I have to, and I had to rewind it. I'm like, did he say the rope people? Yes, he did. Don't he you doesn't. Know? They don't. Their tribe doesn't have a name. That was They're a the setup. Rope people. That was a that was a punchline to a setup that happened earlier. 
And and that's fine. So funny. What my my problem with it is the the only people on this island are like the the indigenous, indigenous tribes people, right? and and the phantom. Well, no, you also have the British government or whatever they were there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like they haven't taken any time. No. It's the rope people. That's the rope people. Mm-hmm. Not gonna, he's as the phantom of being handled at his mantle for centuries. Uh, let's not learn the name of the indigenous nope. people. Oh, it was in the books. No. He never bothered. <laughs> exactly. Read, right. Think. Probably. Billy Zane was never handed. Uh, but that's his father's you, fault, Josh. Rope. It's not his fault. Right. It's certainly his dad's not his fault. fault. Uh, they go into the skull cave and he's like, here's a chest of full of precious trinkets I've stolen from a exploded wreckage over the years. We plundered for generations. Here's these black pearls. I'm sure no one's missing. <laughs> And then someone goes, oh, the uh, the pearls, not the pearls again. It's like, oh, he, he doesn't, this is the woman of the week. He just gives new pearls out when, when they come around and express. It's right around this point that I, I meant to, I meant to pause the movie, but I somehow reset the count. I texted you guys because yes. I meant to pause the movie and I somehow reset the counter. And, and my only reference point was, was that guy, his, his uh, man boy servant there going, no smoking in the skull cave. <laughs> and I thought. Really? There's no like you're. Uh, we okay. don't. The phantom doesn't shoot people, and the phantom doesn't smoke. That's, that's where we draw the line. And he must have said "old jungle saying" like three times. Yes. Oh, it's an old jungle, jungle saying. saying. <laughs> As they that's say why, in the jungle. That's why like, it was an old mm-hmm. jungle trick at the end. Ooh, oh, you rascally what, devil! What a cheap jungle trick! <laughs> Unbelievable. Here's the thing. I think the reason I enjoyed this movie so much was I came in. Just going, I don't know what the fuck this movie is going to be. Oh, I guess be. super low expectations. And just yeah. enjoyed the whole thing because of its ridiculous. Because of how bad it was. It was actually enjoyable. Just like you said, Josh, you actually finished it. Unlike Lost in Space, which I'm just like, oh my God, I can't. Listen, Lost not, in Space is not, not the movie on trial right now. <laughs> could not finish it. This movie was a, a decent enough that you could finish it, remember it, and at least laugh at the no, movie. But that's not the with the movie. At the TJ, movie. It was just very disjointed. You're not going to remember it. Was it was disjointed. That's the problem. I do remember it. No, this movie is going to stay remember, with me. Are you I kidding me? I remember the tagline. This that's movie it. is staying with me and you know it. No. That's that's terrible and you should re-examine what you remember. So, uh, go ahead. Never mind. I was, I'll be quiet. Um, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap up my musings because they all take place sort of in that what seems to be really, really prolonged final scene. Yeah, it does um, seem like it just goes on for way for too long. It does, and it, it starts with, ooh, cave pirates with firearms. I was ready for that. He's got a cannon. Uh, that was the best cannon <laughs> shot ever. That cannonball launched that ragdoll clear across the cave <laughs> in a spectacular way. It looked um, like a rejected set of Pirates of the Caribbean, the right. ride at Disney. But, not, but not here's the, the thing. The cave pirates had firearms, yes. all of them, right? Yes. And then all of a sudden, I went, wait a minute, what happened to all the pirates' guns? Because now they all have swords. The, fu- the the phantom shot them out of their hands. Not all of them. He nope, didn't. nope, nope. He shot all of them uh, out of his hands, Brian. And then Josh, and then uh, no. I went, oh, that's, that's literally a Captain Hook sighting right there. <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, well, my favorite part, too, is the literally pulling punches. Anytime there's a punch in this movie, it was pulled. it was yeah. just like... Uh, beginning to take stage combat for the first time. You're like, okay, right. so I, I punch like this and then you'll move. Okay, so let's do it at half speed. Okay, punch great. Punch consists of lunging so hard you just fall <laughs> yeah. over the can, guy. Can we run the camera? I'm going to do this at half speed. All right. Uh-huh. Boom. All right, that's in the movie, right? Yeah, okay, good. Let's keep going. So there should have been, there should have been two decent sort of final, like, boss fights, right? right it right. should have been the the head I, of the Sang Brotherhood. Yep. And and the and the and the Drax. Yeah. Right? They both should have been they they should have been two boss fights. Um both With your were super anticlimactic. And my only yep. my only real thought about that uh Sang Brotherhood leader fight was how did all the blood get on that dude's sword? He didn't attack a single person <laughs> no, with that no, sword. No, remember he stabbed the pirate who got he in his He stabbed way. the one guy and he was like, stabbed, My fight. Yeah, he's my fight. And then he killed it him. It came out clean no, and now no, all of a it sudden came, it came out bloody. Did it? Yeah, it did. I don't recall. My that. favorite thing though is if you really want to intimidate somebody and show your prowess, right? As a man, you spell your name like Xander Drax did. He, he did. X A N D E R D A R A X. It starts with X and ends with X. I'm like, that's how you intimidate somebody. I'm like, you want a power move? Do it all silly like that. Spell your name. Hit it like the guy should have known. What? Like, don't you read the Times? What do you mean? All right. 
So we've answered my question, how all the blood get on the dude's sword. That's fine. I thought it might have leaked out of his bloody mouth. It was just <laughs> spewing blood everywhere. Um, I, I commented, I love how there are, quote unquote, torpedoes roped to the side of what can only be described as a slightly small lifeboat. <laughs> well, you know, that's how modern warfare was in the 30s. They launch, they launch those guys, right? They launch the ladies. Yep. Or they're about to launch the ladies, and then a whole bevy of pirates comes running at them. She goes, cut that rope. Cut, Catherine said yep. Jones cuts the rope. Because now they're friends. Right? The, the, the netting drops down over the entire party of pirates. You can't escape a, a net, And I Josh. think to myself, all guys trapped under nets never think to just stand up. Nope. nope. They never do. Yeah, you can't, Josh. You know why? There's a net on you. <laughs> and uh, it's slippery. And, it's paralyzing, and in fact. Have you ever that, been trapped by a net? That leads me to the two Treat Williams lines, followed by my final question slash musing. Oh, please. Uh, which, because you have Christy Swanson and, and the Phantom there, and then the, the man-boy servant appears, and right. I think, is he going to say there's no sex allowed in the Skull Cave? Because Oh, yeah, there's no boning allowed in the Skull Cave. Right, so where are they going to do that? You do it on the beach. In front amongst of Captain Zeta Jones. Blue Lagoon uh, style. Amongst all the wreckage? Yeah, absolutely. You find your, your favorite rusty uh your your rusty patch of metal, and you're like, that right there, that is where we will do this. I need some tetanus. Oh, I'm not allowed to take off my hood except for one person. You know, here's here's my problem. I, bone. I, I can't I can't take off my hood except for one person. But Catherine Zeta Jones is ten feet away. She ain't gonna see that. That's fine. <laughs> the sun is glaring, Brian. She doesn't have sunglasses. Uh, yeah. The, oh, this movie, this movie was, was ridiculous. Here's it the thing was, too. It was Billy, not even the good ridiculous. Billy, nah, this was the good ridiculous. Billy Zane was apparently a huge fan of the Phantom movie and uh, really just put his heart into it. And I, I, I agree that his character is really flat and not very good. And he it, is not, not very good. Scouty. He's it's just not, not a good actor. Yeah, he's never been good in any. He, that's never the thing, though. Billy Zane's never been fantastic, and he's just fine. Like he, he does. Like he, he almost fucked up the movie Tombstone. If you can buy, if you can believe that, <laughs> right? He wasn't even funny in Community, and everybody's funny. Like in Jason Community. Priestley was better than Billy Zane in Tombstone. Uh, but listen, I gotta give him respect. This probably started his balding thing because he shaved his head for this movie. Uh, and no, uh, he didn't. Yes, he did. He shaved his head for this movie. All okay. the mo- all the all the roll all you the shots. You know an inordinate amount of facts about this movie. I was looking it up because I actually I liked had this to movie. research some stuff. You just seem to know I, it. I look it up. Billy Zane shaved his head for this movie. They did half. They did the movie shots you. with all the hair, and then anytime he was in the cow afterwards, he had no hair. And the tagline was "Slam Evil." Oh yeah, yeah. dude. Yeah. That's the only thing I remember about this film. So, Slam that's true. evil. That's not. That's totally true. When I went to Brian to pitch this idea, I said, "Hey, we should totally do the Phantom." The first words out of Brian's mouth at that point was "Slam evil." Okay, and I'm just like, "What the fuck does Slam evil mean?" And then I saw the poster. I was like, oh, "Tagline." It's on the freaking poster. It's on the movie box. Uh, this this came, movie. This was came delightful. in one of those giant VHS clamshell purple cases. Yeah, it was. I'm, I'm surprised the VHS wasn't purple. The, the word you're looking for is gaudy monstrosity. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> this movie's cute and, and fun. This movie doesn't it's, hurt it's anybody. It's fun, though. I, this I don't movie know what was to fun. To, to, to convince you that this movie was not this fun. This movie was fun. I don't know about fun. Treat Williams, James Remar were fun. The movie was not. The movie was fun. No. No. They had the spirit of what the movie was supposed to be. Yeah, Th- those two. They knew what movie they were in. Right, but when your Billy two Zane main didn't... characters don't no, but... know what movie they're in, it's a problem. I think Christy Swanson knew what movie she is. No, I think she Billy Zane. Not. Did, she had no idea. She, she didn't no even clue. know she was in a movie. I think Billy Zane. <laughs> I, really... I think she just thought she was just you know vacationing. Billy Zane uh, wanted to do this movie so much, right? Worked out, right? Learned all the lines. Showed up to set and went. Oh fuck! I was supposed to do like research and and sh- uh, I should probably think about research for what? I'll just, just say need- the lines. I'll just say the lines. He just needed to be charming, right? And no, likable. Right. He's not any and of that. Right. He didn't study how to do that, so he's just like, I'll just say the lines. He There's no studying. That's just a personality. Had, right, that's what I'm saying. That's he called being to, an actor. He has to Billy Zane that. is not an actor. Oh, I, I, I'm, just, I'm that's, convinced. That's rude. All right. What are your final? What are your closing thoughts on on this on this movie here? I'm glad I watched it again because it was just refreshed about 
How many good movies I've seen recently? Is this what you felt like during Lost in Space? Because everyone else was shitting on the movie, but you really liked it? Because I like this movie. Yes, this is I would watch this again. Like. Oh, no. I would watch this again. Such I would shame. make this an annual screening for me. Not and I hated, I hated the the fourth skull. What fourth skull? I've been wearing it on my wrist the whole time. I'm like, oh, that was fucking dumb. But you know what? I don't care. This movie is just good, clean fun. It it did what it did what it's supposed to do. Entertain me for the hundred minutes and just let me let me enjoy it. You make me sad. All right. Anything else? No. Wrap it up, please. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. If you want to, you can support us directly by going to thatkindofnerd.com. Thank you so much for making us your walk around our neighborhood, your drive to work, or whatever it is we are in your life. And we'll see you on the next episode. Well, welcome to the club because you are that kind of nerd. 